hi guys welcome to my channel guys i've made this video in the middle of boston so guys today my message is uh i want to tell you about my experience my interview experience first of all my my location was nairobi kenya american embassy we arrived there in the morning and uh, we met uh, many 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 selectives there in the morning we met many selectives each of us had a time indicated on our interview so we lined up according to the time but luckily enough whoever had the kid was given a chance before others so we we had our baby boy i arrived there me personally my spouse and my baby boy we arrived there and so we are given chance to go in first that is to line up first yeah there is a couple of check checkpoints so there is a first checkpoint the second checkpoint and the third checkpoint so in order to reach your interview you have to go through three checkpoints the first checkpoint is that uh, entry that the gate itself after the gate they will they will do a couple of checks like your bag to enter there they don't like bags first of all there is a few things you have to know you have to enter there with without big bags you have to enter with only your folders or your files or your papers so so at the first gate they ask for our appointment later first they looked at our appointment later then they asked for our passports they asked for things like our passport yeah and uh, appointment later so when they checked it they put us in the line first line then we went inside they checked us each of us had to raise our hands like you raise your hand they check you they check my wife they check my baby boy they check me and we went into the second checkpoint we went through at the check second checkpoint they take your belonging if you have any phone if you have any metal metallic thing you have to keep it there you th that's why you keep your ipad if you have ipad you keep your any electronic thing they keep it there that is the second point so after the, the second point you will get chance to go in into the compound of the embassy it's a beautiful place when you reach there you feel like ah this looks like america itself <laughs> so when you you reach there there is a place where you have to sit accordingly the there is like four sitting lanes on the four sitting lanes they will ask those who are for the DV lottery, they have to sit in one line. Then the, the other visas, the other immigration visa, they sit in the first line. So we are always in the second line. But they will always call, call us almost the same time. They will always call us according to our time. But sitting, the sitting structure is, is, is kind of one line other visa other migrant visa and one line behind it DV lottery that is a separate line so guys we sat there for a couple of uh hours i would say <laughs> we sat there for like one hour then they called us in so when they called us in we went there we found uh three counters the first counter we had to present our document the first counter we so we presented our document the the lady was so nice that he even gave us advice he gave us advice to to go back to go back and fill a separate ds ds260 for my kid and my wife i had i had i had missed that point i went out i took like an hour i came back it was sad for me to go out it wasn't uh, comfortable at all i just had to run out and fill it and come back so when i came back after feeling that when i came back 
uh, I had to get into the line again. So after getting through the line again, they called me. They called me and I, present, uh, I I went and talked to her. I told her I've already, I'm done with the DS-260 for my child and my wife. She said yes, yes. So she gave me uh, a receipt to go and pay at the cash counter. I paid at the cash counter. Then uh, they told us to wait from outside again. We welcome you to Aaron Nintendo live in Massachusetts, USA. So guys, I'm here talking about my experience. What the, what the interviewer asked me. So guys, uh, when I reached the the interview counter, I would say the interview interviewer section. He, he asked me to introduce myself, like who I am. I mentioned my names. Then he asked my wife. We mentioned and he asked me oh, what's the name of the kid, the baby, that is. I mentioned his name. Then he further went to ask what was my level of education, which I, that was a high school diploma. Uh, that was my highest level and that's what I used. After that, he asked me a trickier question like, have you ever lived uh, outside uh, Uganda? Have you ever been out of Uganda? Yes, I said yes. I, I mentioned uh, UAE. I, I, I didn't want to mention Dubai, but I didn't want to mention Dubai because Dubai is just a city, it's not the country. I mentioned UAE and he asked me, uh, what were you doing there in uh, UAE? I mentioned the work because I used to work as a security security officer there in Dubai. I mentioned. Then he asked me for how long did I work there? Yes, I mentioned seven years. I was there uh, for seven years, and uh, luckily enough, I had. I had evidence. I had my work experience, which I had presented. I had my uh, security, that is police letter, which I had presented to him. And he was so convinced with my, with my replies. Because likely enough, I'd gone through my interview. I, I had most of the points in my head. Whatever they asked, I had to mention. So. The other question he asked was about uh, my relationship with my wife. There was a few of the, there was a couple of questions he asked about our relationship, like how did you meet your spouse? So I mentioned where and what was I doing there. I mentioned he laughed. He understood, you know, there are some funny places where you could meet someone, like you're going out to buy something and you meet him or her and you you get to know each other. So that's why he had that smile on his face. Ah, I say, oh, guys, this guy is... Okay. So he was convinced. He went on asking us questions like, when did you move in together? I mentioned things. I mentioned, My answer was like, we moved in together after five months of our relationship so it was like so you moved in before engaging or after engaging we i i told him after engaging like after I engaged my wife i moved in with her so so he was convinced he was convinced uh, he went on asking me questions personally about what do i do to earn a living what do i do that is a trick one. They will always ask you this question if you are there and they are expecting your interview to soon. They're expecting it soon. They will further ask you, they will always ask you this tricky question like, what do you do to earn a living? Uh, that moment, I told him uh, I was a photographer. In my place, I was a photographer, part time photographer. Yeah, you know, guys, in Africa, we tend to do a lot of stuff to earn a living. 
I did a couple of jobs. Like I was personally employed. I was like personally I was uh, a freelancer. I could do this, could do that. I had I was engaging in family or business, which I did not mention. Rather, I mentioned photographer because I never wanted to make it complicated. Yeah, it's an advice to many guys out there. Don't make questions complicated. Don't explain too much. Just be straight on the point. I mentioned photographer. So he was convinced. Uh, he went on asking my wife what she did, what she did, what was her profession. And she, she she answered back to him very well. Yeah, I thank God my wife and I, we went through the, the same questions we went through before interview, they are the same questions they asked us. I always made sure me and my wife, we go through our DS260, we go through like uh, common questions they might ask us. And they are the same questions they ask. So, guys, after after some time of answering questions, he just ended the interview by asking me where I'm going to live when I reach US and what am I going to do. So after when he asked me where I'm going to live, I mentioned the host address and what am I going to do there. There is, a, there is always a simple answer for that. If you are to go for your interview, put this in your mind. Whenever they ask you what are you going to do, don't mention a lot. You can say leave, work and study. That's all. That's what you need to mention. Leave, work and study. So whenever you mention leave, work and study, it, it gives him a very good impression. Like you know whatever you, you're going to do there. Because in US there are all uh, there's a lot of opportunities like you can live and you can work and you can study that will help the consular that will help the consular to understand that you're going there for a positive reason. Just after that, he told me personally told me Aaron, congratulations, your interview has been approved. And uh, the only thing I can tell you, you made a good choice, like the place where you're going, that is Boston, there is uh, many Ugandans, there is many Africans, it's a very nice, it will be a good place for you to start your life. So, guys, that moment I was happy and my wife was happy. But at that moment, my kid was sleeping. Throughout the interview, my baby was sleeping. So it was, we were lucky, like, my baby did not disturb us during our interview. It was just asleep. All throughout the interview, was tired, hungry, and asleep. Yeah. So, guys, there, there is uh, some few advices I would like to give you. If you ever travel to the to the American embassy, like if you ever go there for interview, carry something to eat, carry something to eat. There is nothing there inside they will provide to you. And you will be in the waiting line. However much you need anything to eat, you won't have to move. You won't, There won't be chance for you to move out of the line. You are, so you have to wait and wait and wait. And it's always busy. When you go there for interview, expect it to be busy. It's always busy and you have to be on time. They're always taking you by time. They're always checking you in by time. Yeah. So guys, thank you for watching. Those, uh, that was my experience at the consulate. Wow, guys, this, this could be <laughs> so tall. I can't say it's the tallest here because I don't know, but it's so, so tall. This one, I think we don't have it in East Africa. <laughs> so tall, like you have to look up. It's like it's reaching the clouds, <laughs> if you can see. 
so tall so guys i'm in boston and it's an amazing place as you can see it has one of the buildings tall buildings here tall buildings as you can see you have to look up to to see the peak of the the building behind me and uh, I have a, a library that is a library it's so big if you want to read your books i think inside there there are so many books you you can go and uh, read you know americans they tend to read books and we have another tall building there if you could compare this place where i am to yuga to kampala it could be like the city square place i could be around city square if i was to be in kampala in kenya i don't know <laughs> so guys you can compare compare it to your country and uh, which place could it resemble yeah so guys thank you for watching those uh that was my experience at the consulate thank you so much for watching